Russian prisoners of war who fought against Ukraine are held in a special camp. They are not only citizens of Russian Federation, but also mercenaries from other countries, in particular from Nepal. There is a single schedule for everyone – wake up, breakfast and paid work. There is also free time. The camp has a football pitch, a library and a TV set. We watch TV, chat with the guys, read books. and They let us into the library. How do they feed you? Good, three times a day. They also let us smoke, give us shoes and clothes. We have been sent cigarettes by parcels. We buy goods in the shop, like sugar, tea, biscuits and sweets. Prisoners of war cook their own food. They also grow some food themselves – cucumbers, tomatoes and beetroots. There is a bathhouse, a laundry and a chapel on the territory. Ukraine complies with all Geneva conventions on the treatment of prisoners of war. Representatives of humanitarian organizations, in particular the Red Cross, often come here. The specialists communicate with the prisoners of war and collect and deliver letters for their relatives in Russia. The Russian servicemen admit that they did not expect such an attitude in Ukrainian captivity. They were told by the commanders that they could not surrender to the Ukrainian armed forces and were scared of torture. I was hysterical when I was taken prisoner after a bombing, concussion. At first I didn't understand anything, but when I recovered they explained me where I had to go. The guys at the front line were understanding, they didn't beat me, they talked to me, calmed me down. Then they wrapped the hands and eyes and handed over to other guys. In their interviews, Russians talk a lot about the lies of their military leadership. Some were promised a position as a repairman, but were sent to dig trenches. And some were sent on meat assaults, even though they had previously been guaranteed a driving position. We lost the whole company in a week. There were eight men left. They gathered everyone, also brought five mobilized men from the second group, and that's how they made a new unit. They say that Russians don't abandon their own people, but there are mountains of corpses, nobody takes them away. They just lie in the ground and nobody takes them away. The Russian authorities prefer not to talk about their soldiers who have been taken prisoner. Therefore, Kiev has created an alternative way for relatives of Russian servicemen to search for the missing people. The Ukrainian project want to find. They need to enter the data of a Russian soldier into a form and leave a request in the Telegram bot. In time, information about the serviceman will come. If he is in captivity, he can be contacted. I would like Ukrainians to be treated in the same way as us. We are waiting for the peace summit, maybe something will be decided there. Your prisoners of war will come here and we'll go home. Unlike Ukraine, Moscow hides the whereabouts of Ukrainian prisoners of war, does not allow representatives of humanitarian organizations to visit them and violates the Geneva Conventions. Ukrainians in captivity are tortured and subjected to moral and physical pressure. Often they are starved to death. I'm home. We are really looking forward to seeing you. Thank you, everything's fine, we got through it. The first so-called screening, an informal conversation with prisoners of war who are now returning, shows that up to 90% of our people suffer from various types of torture, inhuman treatment, physical, sexual and mental violence. Andriy Kostin, Prosecutor General of Ukraine, in a comment to journalists. International organizations are aware that Russia violates the rights of Ukrainian prisoners of war. The UN Commission of Inquiry and Violations in Ukraine states that Ukrainians are systematically and brutally tortured. The authorities claim that this is a systematic and widespread practice. Virtually every Ukrainian prisoner of war we interviewed said that Russian servicemen or officials had tortured him during captivity, repeatedly beaten him, used electric shocks, threatened to shoot him, forced him to stand for long periods of time in difficult poses, and simulated execution. More than half of them were sexually abused. Daniel Bell, head of the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission in Ukraine, from a report on the UN website. At the national level we must conduct an investigation ourselves. And where we cannot at the national level bring to justice the first leaders of the Russian Federation, who are also responsible for this, we must turn to the International Criminal Court and advocate a new criminal case on torture that is likely to be a crime against humanity. 
Ukrainian prosecution has registered more than 450 criminal proceedings for ill treatment and torture of Ukrainian prisoners of war and more than 2,000 for torture of civilians. Ukraine's prosecutor general Andriy Kostin has said that 73 Russian war criminals have already received sentences for torture and ill treatment of Ukrainians. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Nikita Skoblikov, UATV News.